Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and today I'm going to be going over sort of a parts list guide on how to put together a really awesome gaming PC and this is likely for those of you that don't have a gaming PC at all and are looking for a cheap way to not only get onto the platform but also actually get something that works well in modern AAA titles. So with that in mind, let's jump straight into this sort of parts list guide. As we get into this, it is very important to realize we are using the used market here. And the main reason for that is it is just kind of expensive to put together a brand new modern system that can actually game at 1080p in really solid frame rates. Uh, when you're thinking about a sub $300 PC, you're probably using something like an Athlon APU or maybe something like a 3200G. And the problem with that is they just don't game well with modern AAA titles at 1080p, whereas this PC we're gonna be putting together absolutely will. So with that in mind, we're gonna head over to eBay and look for an Inspiron 3847, and that's gonna put you on the Haswell platform for Intel. It's gonna be a fourth gen. Uh, I would sort for an i3 processor because we're probably gonna be upgrading the CPU anyways. Now, if you do find a good deal on an Inspiron 3847 that already has an i7 in it, go ahead and jump on that. But for the most part, it seems like these Inspirons were built with i5s as a very common CPU as well as i3s. So to save us some money since we are upgrading the CPU anyways, I would go for the i3s, which you should be able to find for about 65 or $70 shipped to your door. Now, I would also recommend to look for one with at least eight gigabytes of DDR3 memory. If you can find one with 16 gigabytes, obviously that's even better, especially if you plan on upgrading that immediately. Now, one of the downsides to these Inspiron uh, desktops is that they only have two DIMM slots. So if you get one with 16 gigabytes, you're getting a two by eight kit, you're set to go for the foreseeable future. If you only get one with eight gigabytes, if you decide to upgrade that down the road, you are gonna be stuck with replacing your DIMMs instead of just adding DIMMs to the motherboard. So just sort of bear that in mind, but it's kind of one of those costs of getting up and running at a cheaper cost, you do sacrifice some things down the line. Now, speaking of our CPU upgrade, once you've gotten your desktop in hand, I would go for something like a Xeon 1230 V3. This is gonna be about a 65 or a $70 CPU, but it will get you four cores and eight threads, which is gonna be enough to play even the most modern AAA titles. Yes, it is absolutely not a high-end gaming system, but it will absolutely get you up and running with very solid frame rates at 1080p. Now the rub with the 1230 V3 is that I couldn't find any documentation from Dell that specifically says it does support these Xeons from the Haswell generation. So it's kind of a uh, risk it if you wanna go with the 1230 V3 because those are only 65 or $70. And in my mind, if it doesn't work out and the motherboard actually doesn't support that, then you could always turn around and sell it back on eBay. You would take a small loss and then you could move over to the i7 4770. The reason I would be willing to take that gamble if it were me is simply because the i7-4770 is more like $90 or $100. So uh, it looks like the 1230 V3 would save you a significant amount of money on that while still getting you to four cores and eight threads. And also from past experience, these Dells typically do a good job of actually supporting these Xeon processors. But again, it's a little bit of a gamble which direction you wanna go. If you want the surefire thing, spend an extra 20, 30, $40 and get yourself the i7-4770. Those are 100% supported by the Inspirons. Next up is going to be our power supply because these Inspiron 3847 ship with a power supply that has 216 watts available on the 12 volt rail, which is just not enough for most modern GPUs. So we are absolutely going to be replacing that. Now, conventional wisdom would be to not just cheap out on a power supply, go ahead and get something that costs 35 or even $40, but is going to last for years and years. And I can't go against that conventional wisdom in general. It's good advice. However, if you're willing to take a little bit of a gamble, there are a ton of Vostro 350 watt power supplies. That's another Dell pre-built desktop PC that you can get your hands on. Uh, these 350 watt power supplies have 300 watts available on the 12 volt rails and importantly they come with a 6 pin PCIe plug which we are going to need for our GPU. So if you're willing to save about $20 in some cases you can get these for about $20 to $25 pretty much all day long on eBay. If you want to go that route you absolutely can. And that brings us to the graphics card. Now the motherboards on these Inspirons the other big sort of downside to them is that they don't have a ton of space 
between the back of the computer chassis and the SATA plugs. You can't put in, for example, uh, long GPUs and expect them not to interfere with the SATA plugs, which are essential for, you know, having storage and an operating system. So for my recommendation, I'm gonna say that you should probably stick to those shorter graphics cards that are often intended for ITX builds. But uh, EVGA actually has one and uh, several other companies have these as well. They have GTX 1650s that are triple slot cards, but they're actually very short, which is just perfect because these Inspirons do have three slots available to the PCIe by 16 slot. So we can just, instead of going for a longer card, just get a shorter card that is fatter really and the 1650 also only requires a six pin PCIe plug now I was able to find one on EVGA's B stock site for just $120 and that was free shipping though not including tax with that $120 this absolutely will get you up and running with a quad core processor with eight threads available you're gonna have at least probably starting eight gigabytes of RAM and you're gonna have a GPU here that actually can play games now and for the foreseeable future you know for the next couple years you're going to be in excellent shape as far as pc gaming goes with every title out there almost bar none i'm not gonna say that there's absolutely no titles that won't play well with this configuration but for the vast majority of titles you're going to be in excellent shape for the next year two or even three years eventually though of course this will get long in the tooth this hardware is obviously largely used already so you are going to need to upgrade down the road and i would say get yourself up and running with this cheaper 300 dollars or so build i think 280 is right around where it is with the current configuration that i showed with the pricing on screen and then in those two three years that you have this system you can be putting away money in the background uh, money that you would have been spending on brand new games on a console side of things and you're probably saving a little money on your games that you're buying on the PC side of things maybe score some of that money away so that when this thing is long in the tooth you can finally upgrade to a very nice PC that you maybe you put together yourself and has a much better upgrade path that just happens to be one of the things that you sacrifice when you go for these very low budget PCs you are sacrificing the upgrade path and the last thing I did want to mention with this PC is the storage configuration for this Inspiron that I showed on the screen comes with a 250 gigabyte hard drive. These Inspirons are all over the place with storage. So you may find one with 500 gigs, you may find one with one terabyte, two or even three terabyte hard drives. I would recommend spending an extra $20 on the system to get yourself a 120 gigabyte SSD as a boot drive to supplement that because it's gonna make the overall system just feel so much snappier. That is absolutely not required though. And that's basically it. That's how you get on the PC platform for a low cost and actually be able to play things at really nice frame rates. But of course, I do wanna hear from you guys about this parts list and this sort of general guide. What do you think about it? Let me know your thoughts down below. And of course, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are excellent and very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.